Hello again! I hope you've been practicing your shaders, if not, don't worry, you can watch my previous videos to review some of the basic concepts, or even better, you can subscribe so you get notified every time I upload a new tutorial. If you are ready, then fasten your seatbelts, because today we are coding a very useful shader, beautiful to the eye and not that complicated. Of course, I'm talking about the famous palette swap shader. Ok, I've created a scene here to help us understand the core concepts of this shader. And you may have seen the different examples I've prepared for you, but let's just concentrate on Mrs. Pac-Man for a minute. What we know right now is that the sprite is composed of four reference colors black, pink, blue and yellow. And right below we have a grayscale gradient. So the way this shader works is by finding a common value between the grayscale gradient and the reference colors. Simple. This is how Mrs. Pac-Man's texture really looks like, but after we apply our shader logic, it is changing the gray color and replacing it with the reference color above it. In case you are wondering, here is the shader code, so you can see what we are doing mathematically. We are just dividing one by the amount of individual colors we need in the sprite, that's four, and what we get is a range threshold. We then transform every value into an integer by multiplying it by four and flooring it. That will give us a natural number we can use in an array as a reference for our colors. What all of this means is that any grayscale value from this range will be changed to the corresponding reference color. Cool! Maybe you still can't see the potential of this, because right now it looks as if we had a static texture. But let me change these reference colors with my color picker and see the result. Of course, what I'm doing right now is changing one value manually, but there is nothing stopping us from changing these reference colors with some coding automating the process and achieving incredible effects like this one, for example. The way we have set up our shader even allows us to increase the size of our reference colors, no problem. Here I have a 7 color sprite and a 12 color sprite. Naturally, this method has its limitations, because if we need more than 100 reference colors, our threshold will be lower than the minimum required for the shader to work. But I think that right now, for our current purposes, 100 colors is more than enough, even for backgrounds. If you enjoyed the video, please join me in the next part, where I'll show you in which cases we will need more than 100 colors, some optimization techniques, and we may even go one dimension higher and port this shader into a 3D world. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe, any of these will help the channel grow. See you in part 2!